Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm sharing my updated list of the top 10 best makeup products from Chanel. Since I've done this video before, and it's been a little over a year, I wanted to make sure that I didn't accidentally copy all of the same products, so I made my list, I went back to check, and I was pleasantly surprised to find that there wasn't much overlap. A couple products were the same because they are just that great. I have to talk about them again. But even if you watched the last video, I'll link it down below in case you're interested, you will see something different today. Like I usually try to do with these best of the brand style videos, I'm going to present everything in the order that I would apply it to the face. The first product is a repeat. This is the CC Cream from Chanel. I love this CC cream. I used the shade 30 Beige. When they reformulated, which was at some point last year, I think, I don't know, time is so fuzzy, especially right now, I have no idea when things occurred, but they added shade 10 and they added shade 50. It used to be just available in 20, 30, 40, so now there are more shades. It's still not incredibly extensive, so if you are very, very fair, Hopefully the 10 will work for you, but if you're really dark, this CC cream might not work, unfortunately. It's a hybrid between skincare and makeup because it has SPF 50, so it has a ton of sun protection, Moringa plum extract, which is chock full of vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, which helps the skin to retain moisture, and it also has medium to full coverage. You can use it for its true purpose as a CC cream, Dab just a little bit on areas of the face that you might need a little extra help evening out your complexion. You can use it as a primer, especially for somebody who has skin discoloration. Perhaps you have rosacea, post blemish marks, sunspots on the face. Going in with a little bit of the CC cream helps even out the surface. That way you don't have to use as much foundation. It's so versatile. This is one of my Chanel essentials, but it's also just one of my makeup essentials. I will never go without the CC cream. I have one more complexion product to talk about, and this is a new addition to the list. I wanted to steer clear of foundations simply because that is so personal. If you're looking for a recommendation, if you want to drop me a comment, tell me a little bit more about your skin type, your personal preferences, what you're looking for in a foundation, I am happy to steer you in the right direction. The Water Fresh Tint retails for $65. It's available in six different shades. I have shade medium, and it's a water-based tint that has little micro droplets of pigment. If you want something very light that's just going to help even out your complexion a little bit, this is great as a primer. It's also going to smooth the canvas, fill in fine lines and pores. That way you have a really nice base to lay your foundation on top of. You could also just use this as your tinted moisturizer. I never thought I would be the type of person who would appreciate a product like that because I've always considered myself a proud, medium to full coverage, loving woman. I don't care how, even on days when my skin is looking very clear, I like coverage, I don't care. I like makeup, I love foundation. But when I first tried this, it was like, whoa. Now I understand, and slowly I've started to shift, and now I lean more towards products like this, or at least I appreciate them. So this makes your skin look perfect, like your skin is perfect. So it's great for no makeup makeup if you are incredibly minimal. Something like this actually does give quite a lot of coverage, so for some people, this is going to be too much, it's gonna to be too heavy. You'll really love the Water Fresh Tint. The next spot on the list is reserved for the liquid illuminators, all three, including the brand new Pearly Glow, which arrived a couple days ago. It's more of a fleshy skin tone, so it's going to be very natural, very subtle, as opposed to the Sun Kissed, which has more of a golden glow. Here are swatches of all three shades so you can compare. The LeBlanc Rosy Light Drops are going to be best suited for somebody with very fair to light skin. The Pearly Glow is going to be great for anybody with light to medium skin. And then the Sun Kissed, I have the old original bottle. This has been discontinued, but this is going to be best suited for anyone with medium to deep skin. You could certainly use all three because it's more of a lightweight gel texture, so they go on very sheer. But if you only wanted to choose one, I would pick the shade that is closest to your skin tone. The way I like to use the liquid illuminator is mix it into my foundation, mix it into my concealer. You can also mix it into your primer 
or tap it directly on top of your cheeks and use it as a liquid highlighter. So again, this is such a versatile product. And what's great about these liquid illuminators is that they work for all different skin types. And here's a little pro tip, especially if you have the shade Sunkissed. This works really nicely on your neck, chest, decollete. You can also mix it into your body moisturizer if you want to, or just apply a little bit on your shoulders if you're wearing something that's off the shoulder, your clavicles, and it makes your skin look flawless. Every time I do that trick, people say, what's on your skin? Your skin is so beautiful. And it's not, it's just because I put a little liquid illuminator. It's the best trick, especially over the summer. Here I have the original Soleil Tan de Chanel, but this is now called the Bronzing Cream. It's part of the Le Beige line, but it is the same universal bronze, same formula, same texture. Everything is identical to the old version. They are simply bringing it into the Le Beige family and they now are calling it what it really is, which is a bronzing cream instead of what it isn't which is a bronzing makeup base. I know some people did use this as a makeup base, especially if you had a tan already, that was really pretty. And you can still use it the same way, it's the same product. <laughs> so no changes, just like Sunkissed. This is not different, this is the old bottle. They simply repackaged it and put it in a pump, which thank goodness they did that because the pump is so much better than the old bottle. This you used to just have to pour and hope for the best. This cream bronzer has been a cult favorite for such a long time. Years and years and years this has been around and it has been beloved. But it only works for a certain group of skin tones, unfortunately, because it is only available in one shade. It says universal bronze, but there's a number. I think it's 370 or 390. That tells me that at some point in the future they may add other numbers. So maybe we will see darker shades, lighter shades at some point in the future. I know people are begging for it. It lasts such a long time. This is only my second bronzer and I've been using this stuff for years, actively using it every single day. Some people I think are intimidated by a cream bronzer. They think it's going to be complicated or time consuming. And the funny thing is, is once you get a hand, hang, hand on it, handle on it, once you get, once you get a hang of it, <laughs> That's what I was looking for. You realize how easy and fast and so simple it is. This helps streamline your makeup in the morning. I use a couple different brushes, but this is one of my favorites. This is from Bare Minerals. It's their smoothing face brush. It's a little duo fiber, so it has, I think these are natural hair. It might be two different versions of synthetic. I would use a synthetic brush if possible. Anytime I've used a natural hair brush, the little bristles will break off and they will just get cluttered in there and it gets really disgusting. So use a synthetic brush if possible. It's buildable, but it doesn't have to go on really dark. So don't think that your face is going to be the color of this bronzer. It's not. It's going to sheer out. It's going to blend seamlessly. And there's nothing more natural looking than a cream bronzer. There's no possible way I could do a Chanel favorites video and not talk about the blushes, which I did in my last video, but I talked about the main selection of blushes, particularly Jersey, because that happens to be my favorite. I also really like Rose Bronze, Malice, Rose Initial, Rose Patel is one of the top sellers. Rosewood, oh my gosh, is so beautiful. Elegance is another really wonderful shade. Evening Beige is beautiful. There are probably seven or eight. I would say the entire selection, actually. There's not one bad blush from Chanel. They're all beautiful. But in today's video, to spice it up, do something a little bit different, I want to talk about their tweed blushes. I first started seeing these maybe two years ago when they came out with the pink and coral version, which are so pigmented. Here I have Tweed Beige. And I also have Tweed Pink. This is a new version. This is very soft, very light. It's a gorgeous baby pink. It's really going to be best for anybody who's very fair. Fair to light, definitely not medium. This won't show up. But the Tweed Beige is this beautiful, kind of bronzy shade of blush. It is so pretty, so natural. And a blush like this is perfect for pairing with a nude lip, a red lip, I always think it's nice to have something like this on hand. 
They start off with this beautiful tweed fabric design embossed on top with little flecks of shimmer woven in. It is so beautiful. It ties back to the history of the brand because Chanel is first and foremost a fashion house known for the tweed jackets, the tweed dresses. The last product I have for the face is the Duo de Camellia highlighter. But really this could be sort of a group item of all of the Chanel highlighters, all of the limited edition highlighters. I do really love their illuminating powder. I have the opal. That's the only one I have, but they're all very pretty. But I think Chanel does a wonderful job coming out with these limited edition pieces. They're so much fun to collect. This one in particular, I believe is still available. It is amazing. They launched this for holiday last year and it just blows me away every single time I apply this highlighter because it's so unexpected for Chanel. This is not natural, subtle, no makeup makeup. You have this gold shade right here and then this kind of silver platinum shade. I just mix. The Chanel eyeshadow quad is iconic. This is one of the Chanel essentials. They've been around for such a long time. And if you're a Chanel collector or you've been a Chanel lover for years and years, you remember all of the old Chanel quads, the ones that had the square pans, the old names, the old formulas even. They have changed and evolved over time, but they are still so iconic. In fact, I picked up the Warm Memories palette and this is one of my favorite palettes right now. It's what I'm wearing today. I recently picked up an old quad that I have. This is Mystere A Intensite, number 304. Do you remember this one? I remember thinking, oh, this is sort of similar to Warm Memories. I'll just pull this out and I'll create a similar look. What a night and day difference. Now this is older, so maybe that played a role. But I was struggling to apply this. And I remember when this first launched, I loved this palette. I raved about it and I thought it was the best thing that they had come out with. Well now, I see such a huge difference. I think even in the short time, because this is old, but it's not old, old. I have some palettes in there that are really, really old. In that time, they have upgraded their quality so much. I think the quads that they're coming out with now are so much better than some of the old quads. All around, I'd say the eye category is pretty strong for Chanel. Not the eyebrow category. That needs a little work. It's still a little bit weak. But there are a lot of really great products. The La Volume Mascara is amazing. I really love the Inimitable Intense Mascara. This next item is eyeliners. <laughs> I was gonna say just the waterproof eyeliner, but I'm adding the new liquid eyeliners in there as well. So this next product is sort of all-encompassing eyeliner. I didn't include this in my last video and I was surprised because this is one of those iconic products from Chanel. People come in all the time, they want their ebony eyeliner, the Celadon, the Noir Intense. What's the purple one? It's escaping me right now. But there are several marine Marine, Celadon, what's the purple? Oh, this is gonna drive me crazy. Noir Intense, Blackwood, Ebony, of course, Espresso. That's the very deep brown shade, beautiful. That is very popular. Bruna Gope, love that shade. Celadon Marine Fervent Blue is still available on here. Cassis, that's what it is. Cassis, the very dark purple shade. That is very popular. But at least five or six of those, I would say, have their own cult following where people just come and restock, restock time and time again. They don't change. They don't go to other brands. They don't experiment. If you use espresso eyeliner, you're going to come and you're probably going to pick up two at a time and you're going to get your espresso eyeliner. So here I have the Bruna Gopi. This is another dark brown. I typically don't do black eyeliner in the waterline and that's really the best place to apply this, but you can apply it outside the waterline as well. The bottom comes off. Every time I show that trick, there's always at least one person who says, I had no idea. So I have to say it every single time. You can remove the bottom and there's a little pencil sharpener there. So in case the point gets too dull and you don't wanna kind of wipe it on a napkin, they smudge immediately. Like if you wanted to smudge it, you can apply and then smudgy smudge. But then once it sets, once they dry, 
they really don't budge. And I also really love these new liquid eyeliners. The shades are beautiful, they're so easy. I have this one on today. I think these are incredible and I'm so glad they brought these back. I also have the Signature de Chanel, that's the liquid eyeliner pen. I really love it, even though every once in a while it does bleed on me, and for that reason, there are other liquid eyeliner pens that I prefer. And lastly, we've arrived at lips, which might be Chanel's strongest category. I don't think there's a lip product offered by Chanel that I don't absolutely love. There isn't even a lip product offered by Chanel that I feel so-so about. The new lip liners. I love these lip liners. Today I'm wearing Beige Natural. It is the perfect nude. It is so beautiful. They're smooth. They're creamy. They glide on the lips and then once they set, they're not going to budge. These have a little brush and even though I was initially slightly disappointed because I was hoping that they would bring out retractable lip liners, I think these are as good of a lip liner as I could have hoped for. I always keep Beige Natural in my purse because I use it so much. Coming in at number 9 is the La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue Longwear Lipstick from Chanel. And this could be my number one favorite Chanel product ever. This is the lipstick that I have on today. It's Intense Caramel. I also have the Intense Rosewood. And in the past, I've gone through Tender Beige, Light Rose, Soft Rose. I mean, I think I've made my way through the rainbow, <laughs> the entire spectrum of shades. First, you apply the liquid lipstick, then you top it off with the gloss. Your lips aren't necessarily going to stay super glossy, so I know some people really like the look and appearance of a matte lip. Just trust me, you want to top it off with the gloss. There's something about this gloss. It's not like any other gloss. These two work together, so you have to use them together. But when you do, it doesn't budge. You will get 24 hour wear, even longer sometimes. I'm not somebody who really gets upset if I have to reapply my lipstick, but there are certain scenarios where a lipstick like this is essential. Brides. If it's your wedding day, you want something that you're not going to have to worry about touching up. If you work in a field where you can't be touching up your makeup, you just have to apply it once in the morning and hope that it lasts all day, this is perfect for you. I've talked to nurses who say because they sometimes have to wear masks, they like a lipstick like this because that way they you know, still want to wear something, but it's not getting all over the place. These don't transfer, so if you kiss your husband, kiss your significant other, it's not going to get all over them. There are just so many benefits to this lipstick, and every once in a while I'll meet somebody or someone will comment because they've never tried it and they want to know, is it really that good? My answer to you is yes. Coming in at number 10 are the Rouge Coco Glosses. The lip glosses from Chanel are so classic. I think they're just a staple in any luxury makeup collection. Here's number 119. I have this one on my lips today. Here is 106. I remember thinking that they were crazy for discontinuing the Glossomers. I just didn't understand it. I thought nothing is going to be as good. They did change the wand, they changed the formula, they brought out some different shades, and I am still sometimes sad about some of the old shades that are no longer available. Twinkle is one of them, Mica was one of my favorites, Giggle was classic, Beige Star. There were so many beautiful shades that all kind of developed a cult following. I mean, people loved them and they would come in time and time again and repurchase. It was so shocking when they disappeared. 119 used to be called Wild Rose. I think that was probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular gloss. They brought that one back. This one even, now it's called Amarena 106, but this was around as well, but I, it went by a different name. I think it was called Myriad or something like that, but it is still the same. It's one of the old ones, just in a new package, new name. But 119 is my all-time favorite. Burnt Sugar is one of the new ones that they came out with that I'm absolutely obsessed with. So there are some new shades that are starting to develop their own following, but nothing like the Glossomers. Even still, it's so beautiful, it's so classic, it's an iconic piece of Chanel, and I think it's a great introductory piece if you're looking for your 
first piece of Chanel. I know I mentioned the highlighters are really beautiful, but they're a little bit more expensive. So if you don't want to spend $70 on a limited edition highlighter, the $30 Rouge Coco Gloss is also really beautiful and a great way to sort of dip your toe into the Chanel pot. My one honorable mention of the day is the loose powder. And the only reason this isn't on the list, because it is one of my favorite Chanel products, is because I don't have it here to show. But I did want to at least talk about it because the new loose powders are now available on the website, I noticed. So it used to only be available in, I think, three different shades. I always only knew three shades. But now it's available in seven different shades. So it comes in 10 which will probably be the one that I pick up. It looks like it is a translucent, pure white powder. There's also 12, 20, 30, 40, 70, and 121. Thank the heavens because they needed to expand that shade range. Now, if you have a medium or deeper skin tone, you can use the Chanel Loose Powder. And I love that they added 12, so that will have a slightly pink undertone, which might be nice, especially for setting the under eye area. It is so finely milled. It puts the Laura Mercier translucent powder to shame. And I do like that powder. I really like the glow version. But there's nothing that competes with the Chanel loose powder. I have other loose powders now. I kind of would like to go through them. I do like them. I don't love them as much. And that completes my list of updated favorites from Chanel. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, your questions down below. I love hearing from you guys. So be sure to share your favorites down in the comment section. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything that I have today on my face down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.